Okay, since it's no longer possible to print any form of separation that requires a halftone screen applied to it from versions of Photoshop beginning with CS5 and then going forward, you'll need to save your multi-channel color separations in a format called DCS 2.0, which is a sort of EPS format that is able to uh, contain spot color channel information. Now here we have a uh, separation open in Photoshop. Now, although this version is CS4, the saving of a DCS2 file is identical uh, between CS4 and CS5 and 5.5. And uh, more than likely all versions uh, above that when available. Now here is how your channel's palette needs to uh, appear prior to saving as a DCS. You'll notice that the RGB channels have been deleted. This is very important. Also make sure if there's a composite CMYK channels, they're deleted. And the only thing that should remain in your channels palette uh, is each ink color that you intend to image to film. And all these channels should be turned on. Now the next thing you'll do is go up to the file command and choose save as. When the Save As dialog box opens, we want to make sure you to select Photoshop DCS 2.0. Okay, that's the format we need to save the file as. And you also want to be sure that the Spot Color checkbox is checked. Now you're going to click Save. However, the process of saving the file is not over. And this is the most important part of saving your DCS uh, format file correctly is making sure that all of these settings are uh, correct so your file will at least appear uh, on screen within your external application for output and behave correctly. Now next to preview we want to check TIFF 8-bit pixel that's what we want selected. Okay uh, in DCS we want to choose single file with color composite Right, and next to encoding, we want to select binary. Okay, all of these checkboxes down here can remain unchecked, but make absolutely sure that these are the selections you have next to preview, DCS, and encoding. Once you have that selected, click OK. And now the file has been saved in a DCS 2.0 format and can be printed from within applications such as Adobe Illustrator, uh, CorelDRAW, InDesign, Quark Express, uh, or any type of program like that. Next we'll open up Illustrator and uh, explain to you how to output the uh, DCS2 file. Okay, now uh, I closed Photoshop or, and we opened up a copy of Adobe Illustrator. And uh, what you need to place a uh, DCS file within Illustrator, or CorelDRAW for that matter, is you need to create a new blank document. So you'll have to go up to File, New, and you want to make sure the color mode is RGB. Uh, make sure that your page size is correct, and click OK. Okay, once the new file is open, we'll need to bring that DCS file created from within Photoshop into the Illustrator file. Now in Illustrator, we're going to go up to File and we're going to choose Place. If you're using CorelDRAW, you would choose Import. So we'll click Place and now we'll select the file that was saved as a DCS file and click the Place button. Okay, once that's placed within Illustrator, you'll know, notice that um, it's going to appear washed out or slightly grainy. And this will also be the case with CorelDRAW. Uh, don't be alarmed about this. Uh, this has no bearing at all on how your file will print. This is the same file. There's been no changes at all made to it uh, between viewing it in Photoshop and in Illustrator or CorelDRAW as a DCS2 file. 
It's just the on-screen uh, preview, where DCS files do not preview as correctly as, uh, you know, within Illustrator, CorelDRAW, or PageMaker, or InDesign, as they would within their original application, um, Photoshop. Okay, now once placed uh, within Illustrator, you'll need to go to File, Print, and once uh, within the print, you want to choose Output. Okay, next to Mode, you want to change Composite to Separations Host Based. Okay. Okay, after checking the separations host based and uh, making sure that all your other variables are correct, such as your printer uh, selection, uh, you know, your emulsion up, reading, you know, everything else, you know, these are just common things you'll need to set. You'll see that the DCS file contains all of your spot colors, you know, from within your color separation brought in from Photoshop. Now from here you'll need to change the frequency, the angle, and the dot shape for each channel to be output. So now you would just change your frequency to let's say 55 lines per inch for the simulator process, the angle of 26, and the dot shape of elliptical. And you just need to do that for each color within your separation and click print. And it's as simple as that. So there's really not, it's really not that difficult to use DCS2 files. It is an extra step. It does involve using an additional program to send your separations to film, but it's really not that big of a deal. And for those using uh, CorelDRAW, it's a little bit different, obviously, because it's a different uh, application from a different company. But if you take a look in our user guide, we uh, go over, you know, concisely on how to uh, correct the output DCS2 files from a copy of CorelDRAW. Visit our website today to download a full 15-day trial version along with a 4-hour instructional video. Ultraseps is the most advanced color separation and Photoshop productivity tool available for the t-shirt screen printing industry and is developed by the creator of Quickseps Professional.